Hi, my name is Himmel. I'm a motivational speaker and facilitator living in Melbourne, Australia. I'm also studying psychology just to further my professional expertise. And in this video, I wanna share with you seven things that I think that you should know if you were ever to try and get into the field of psych, especially if you plan to study it at university, just so you can best prepare yourself if you choose to go down this path. The first thing is, is that psych is not gonna solve all your personal problems. Oh, but bro, you're studying psych, right? If you're depressed or anxious, just like read your textbook. That is not by any means how any of this works. Two, getting into psych for helping people. A lot of people choose to get into this field for this particular reason. And it's a great reason, but you have to be extremely connected to it. And I say that because there's a lot of times that psych can get extremely challenging. And for the most part, from what I know from my own experience, psych, especially at an undergraduate and honors level, which takes about four years, it's actually mostly preparing you to do research, not necessarily anything else. Now this is great if you want to do research, but if you want to get out on the front lines and start helping people, it's a really long pathway. Now this is not to say that the whole undergrad and like honors and masters and all that, it's not to say that any of that is useless because it definitely gives you a different way of thinking, which in its own way can help other people. But a lot of people get into this field thinking that they're gonna be helping people straight away and that's not gonna be the case. It's gonna take a number of years before any of that actually ends up happening. And in the end, a lot of people end up quitting because it's just too long of a haul. This kind of leads on into the third point, which is it kind of takes a while for you to end up actually helping people. In Australia, it takes like roughly five years because you have to do undergrad, then you have to do honors, then you have to do masters before you can actually get out into the field and practice. Like I said, university prepares you really well to do research. And I think in America, from what I know, you have to do a PhD, like you have to become a doctor in order to become like a clinical psych. Don't quote me on that. I just heard that on a podcast with like, I think Dr. Julie Smith. But like, just know that in general, I think in most countries, it's a really long pathway. In Australia, you actually don't apply what you have learned in the ways that you expect. Like it does prepare you somewhat to eventually practice but like I said that's like four plus years down the track I might be sounding a little bit repetitive here but I just want you to be very well aware that it is a long pathway and it is most definitely not easy Four, there is a lot of content which means there is heaps of reading I remember in my first week of studying psych um, when I was doing this uh, graduate diploma um, I remember in one of the modules it had written there um, oh, we have to watch all these videos and we have to read, you know, this part of the textbook. And then underneath that, there was a link for a document that you could download that was the summary of whatever readings that you had to do from the textbook. And I downloaded this summary and I opened it up and it was over a hundred pages long. And that was for one week of psych. This was a summary. It was the textbook condensed into a hundred pages. Like it was just, I mean, granted there was diagrams and everything, but like, that is a lot of reading. I'm not saying this to scare you or anything. I'm just saying that these are some things that you have to be prepared for. I wasn't certainly prepared for that much of reading, but now that I'm kind of in the middle of it, I kind of know what to expect now as I go into my next subjects. I just know that I have to spend a lot more time and maybe take time from other areas of my life that I want to spend more time in, but unfortunately I have to spend this time studying and doing the reading and learning the content. Now that being said, there is a range of content, lab reports, presentations, essay writings, multiple choice exams. Like there is a whole bunch of different things underneath psych, which is really good. That might be just the way that Monash has done their graduate diploma. Like it just ends up being a lot more interesting. I'm not, I don't exactly know how other undergraduate uh, courses at different universities do it, but I know when we're doing it at Monash, it's really interesting. Like it just means that there's a whole range of different um, like activities that we can pretty much do, which means that it's interesting. Like for me personally, it just ends up being interesting. It doesn't mean that I enjoy every single part of it because there is certain parts that I definitely dislike, but it just means that, you know what, variety is the spice of life. It makes, makes things, it just keeps things interesting. So it doesn't feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. Six, you have to do well. If you don't do well in undergrad, then you're probably not gonna get into the honors program that you want to. If you don't do well in honors, then you're probably not gonna get into the master's program that you want to. I know in clinical psych, especially in Australia, it is extremely competitive. Now clinical psych is the one that I think most people would have heard of. They work with, they generally work in clinics and they like diagnose people with like depression, anxiety and all that sort of stuff. I don't know the exact kind of like things that they do exactly, but I know for the most part that that is pretty much what they do. Like, fair enough. You want the people to be helping people to be both good with people, but also academically. But it just means that if you're not an academic person, like, you know, essay writing and statistics and all these different sort of stuff just doesn't sit well with you, then just know that that's gonna take a lot more effort from your end for your mind to kind of get your head around all these different things and then actually produce like, 
pieces of material and like pieces of like for like of, of assessments to a certain high standard so you can actually progress through the pathway of psychology. This is something that I personally struggle with. So I end up spending actually a lot more time, I think, I believe anyway, in my opinion, studying psych and doing all these different things just so I can get better at like, for example, essay writing or like lab report writing because those are just aren't my strong suits. But when it comes to, you know, different pieces of content like delivering a presentation, I'm a lot, like I'm a lot better at that because that's where my skill set lies. It just means that I just all these other weaknesses that unfortunately has to like plays a really big part in the pathway of psychology after spending so much more time on it. It's actually one of the big reasons why I didn't start studying psych earlier. I was just too afraid that it was just going to be a bit too hard. Like it was going to be way too difficult because I felt that I wasn't an academic person. Like I wasn't an academic individual. I did well in high school, yes, because that was the only one thing that I was doing and I worked really hard because I had a really good set of friends that were pushing me to work really hard. I just questioned my ability to work really hard, specifically in the area of like essay writing, lab report writing and all these different things that require like a really great level of like grammar and like English and like systematic writing in a way that's coherent and just makes sense to an individual that's reading it. Like there's no, I remember writing like a lab report and there was almost no beauty to it at all. Like there's no nuances and creativity at all. It's just basically just fact, 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 which is, which is obviously what you want it to be because it's just research and you're stating factual evidence because you just did a lab. But like, like for me, it wasn't, it, it's not exciting. I am studying it now and I am finding it challenging, but I am working my way through it. And so if you are someone that doesn't pride themselves too well on academics, don't feel afraid that you cannot do psych. You most certainly can. It's just going to take a lot more effort. But then the other areas, for example, like counseling, which may not be as long, which will require a lot, like which will require like essay writing and all that sort of stuff. It just means that like, you don't have to go into too much depth and too much of the nuances of like the human mind um, and behavior and all that when it comes to counseling. It's just a kind of different type of like way of looking at psychology. And you could also even go into stuff like life coaching, which I did for a little while. I just felt like I wanted a little bit more of that professional side of things um, and that credibility side of things, which is why I chose to do psych. And the seventh and last point of view, which not many people know about, is that there are so many different types of psychologists. There are like sports psychologists, which is like obviously the psychology of people in sport and like performance and like you know limiting beliefs and like you know um like I, i'm sure they have cases of like uh, things like the yips and like overcoming the yips or like you know working together effectively as a team so you can get the best outcome yada yada, yada. i'm sure that's what that's what in my head i believe a sports psychologist would do i'll find out more about that later on down the track there's obviously the clinical psychologist like i met before and there's also things like organizational psychology which is the psychology of people at work and like how workspaces influence employee productivity and like burnout and mental health and workplace and all that sort of stuff so there's so many different types of psychologists like there's even psychologists that do like specifically and only research like so many different types of psychs out there so don't feel like if you're going to start studying this particular like area that you're only going to be doing this one thing like all that psych all psychologists deal with you know anxiety and depression that's all that they do no that's not the case like they deal with, they deal with like a whole range of different things which also makes it really exciting it means that as you're going through undergrad as you're doing your honors and all that stuff um you can just think about what type of psychologist you'd like to be like so that's it from me hopefully this video has helped you if you know someone or a friend or something that is doing psychology send them this so they can know what they're getting themselves into otherwise if you enjoyed the video make sure you like it and you subscribe to the channel i'll see you in the next one bye